spoke to us in Psalms 84 that his sanctuary, his place of worship is awesome. Therefore, those who desire to be in his presence, they will actually be singing and praising. Therefore, the glory of God will shine over their lives. May the Lord bless you as now we listen unto the anointing of the servant of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And the Lord bless you, servant, as your minister to the souls. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for this opportunity that he has given unto us, that we may appear before his presence and just pour our heart. And this evening, we can just say like what Mary said, I have done what was expected of me, for I am a made servant of God. I thank God for our pastor for giving me the opportunity to minister. And in the next few minutes, in the next few minutes, we will be finishing. So I would like him to come and stand by me. Hallelujah. Just give us Job chapter number 38. Job. Tupati Job. Ama Ayubu. Today we want to look briefly concerning the mystery of altars. The mystery of altars. A series of madabao. An altar is not this thing you are seeing here. Madabao sio kitu hiki ambacho tunakitazama. It's not this platform. Sio ukumbi huu tunaotazama. Where people come and do their performance. Wakati mahali ambapo watu kuja kufanya kazi zao. An altar has its own work. Because it is God who established the altar. And God commands everything while seated on the altar. Altar is very important because God rules. His throne of God is already seated on the altar. And he commands everything from that altar. That's why he asked Job in Job chapter number 38. Job 38. Media give us very briefly. What we to metambo ko haraka ko sabiya muda. Mariko na sema je unajua amri zili amri wambingu waweza kuyadibitisha mamlaka ya kichu ya dunia. In other words, God was asking Job. Do you know the laws that govern the universe? Do you know the laws that determine the way things should be done? And can you use them in your own life? Can you use them in your own life? This was a conversation between Job and God. It was after a very long argument between Job and his friends. But chapter 38, that's where God now is speaking to Job. He is asking now, prepare that you may answer me. If you have an answer. But in chapter number 42, Job tells God, I don't know anything. It's only you who knows that you have the power. In this life, things are governed by another law that is in operation. You may not understand what is happening. But that what is happening is being determined. 
determined and ruled by something that is operating in the spirit. What has been happening in your life? Is something that has been programmed. Is a law that has been at work. Throughout the generations. There are laws that are being governing the way things are being done. We may say we know how to do things. But exactly we choose our leaders to go to the parliament. Because because we know them as good people. But because there is a law that is in operation in the political realm, we end up regretting why we chose them. Government comes after government. With new promises. We know that these people are going to do new things. We are convinced that they will do it in a different way. But very soon they follow suit. And we are convinced that they want to do it. There is a law that is in operation. And that's why God has job. Do you know this law? That you may determine the possibilities of your life. Everything that happens in the spiritual in the physical realm is controlled in the spirit. The spiritual world is not limited limited to time and space. Whatever is happening today, it may have been programmed a hundred years ago by somebody who is not there. But as believers, we have been given an advantage. We have been given an advantage, something that can work for our good. And that's why we have to understand what does outer mean. Because in many times we defend so many things. We defend our denominations. We defend our families. We defend our companies. But when it comes to the law of altars, it is the altar that speaks on behalf. It is the altar that dictates what should happen. It is the altar that has a higher rank. It is the altar that has a better voice. There are many spiritual laws that are in operation. And that's why many people's lives are manipulated without their knowledge. One time Jesus saw a cripple. And the disciples asked him. Between this person and the parents, who sinned? Between him and the parents. So that this thing may happen. That's why I want to make you know that tonight. Whatever is happening around you. There is power that is controlling it. And that's why you find in many times the Christian life. We look like we are mark timing. You try to rise and all of a sudden you go back to where you used to be. Why? Because there is a law that already drew a line in your lineage. For people like this one who should not go beyond this position. And that's why those who want to rise. They understand what altars can do. 
madhabahu nini nini look at the secular world angalia katika dunia ya asli if they start a business wakaanza okay, biashara they must visit an altar first wanaenda kutembelea madhabahu mahali because there is a law that will be set there kwa sababu unajua kuna sheria itakayetiwa that will determine the streaming of customers itakao elekeza ile biashara and you wonder why do we always stream in this person kwa sababu kwa nini tunajiuliza kwa nini tunaamini sana mtu huyu why are we buying from this person kwa nini tunanunua kwake tu peke yake why are people traveling from so far to come and buy kwa nini tunaanza safari kutoka mbali kuja kununua kwake is he selling of does he that the, 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 the price is go kwa, kwa nini labda uh, bei zake ziko chini ama the price is favorable is in, kwa sababu ya bei zake ni nafu in the real sense he may be selling it at a higher price labda hata yeye huuza bei ya juu but there is a law that is in operation lakini kwa sababu kuna sheria inaomiliki why because he visited an altar ni kwa sababu alitembelea madhabahu and the law was set in motion na sheria ikatiwa kumiliki biashara ile glory to god yo sababu you have to understand paswa kuelewa and you have to understand very well paswa kuelewa vizuri yes you have been born again umekuwa ukienda tena yes you have been born again you have been saved ndio umezaliwa upya ama umeokoka but there are things that you need to understand lakini kuna vitu na paswa kuelewa that's why bible says my people perish because they lack knowledge wasa maandiko nasema kwamba watu wangu huangamia kwa sababu ya kukosa maarifa and paul said we should not be ignorant of the tactics of the na, enemy na hivyo basi atupaswi kutoelewa na kutilia mkazo mipangilio ya shetani. There are tactics that the enemy has been using around your life. Kuna mbinu ambazo shetani hupenda kutumia. That's why sometimes you don't understand why things happen the way they happen. Na hivyo kwa sababu yake unakosa hata kuelewa mambo yanavyopasa kuwa. And these outers they Ama, govern territories. Na madhabahu haya huwa na maeneo yake. They govern territories yanamiliki maeneo that's why you find a certain behavior in a certain territory unapata kwamba kuna aina ya tabia katika maeneo fulani why because it is being governed kwa sababu yamemilikiwa it is being programmed inaelekezwa katika mtandao even if a new person will come to that area finally you will behave the same yeah. kwamba hata mtu mgeni anapokuja katika eneo hali atakuwa hivyo why tena. because there is a law that is in operation kwa sababu kuna sheria inayomiliki eneo hilo But those who know their God lakini wale wanaomjua Mungu wao watakuwa imara and will do exploits na watafanya malimbuko you have to understand what does God do unapaswa kuelewa ni kitu gani Mungu Mungu anapotenda what does he use to determine what should happen to you ni kile kitu gani ambacho Bwana hutumia kudhibitisha eh, uwezo wake why many times we just proclaim words without knowing isiwe tu kila wakati tunatamka tu maneno pasipo na kuelewa why because we just saw them written in the bible kwa hivyo basi sio kwamba tutumaona ameandikwa katika biblia oh we had somebody proclaim the same word ama tulisikia mtu akitamka mahali but we must understand we deal with the root cause tunahitaji kuelewa kwamba kuna misingi tunahitaji kukabiliana nayo when the people of israel complained of water being bitter wana wa israeli walipolalamika kwamba maji ni machungu they call the servant of god waliita mtumishi wa mungu they told him the land is good wakamwambia nchi ni nzuri but the waters are bitter lakini maji ni machungu but the waters are causing miscarriage but aji inafanya hata nimba zinatoka what did he do walifanya nini he went to the source alienda katika ile cha michemi when you are dealing with the issues in your life unapokabiliana na mambo katika maisha yetu go to the source unahitaji kwenda kwenye cha michemi you have to go to the source unapohitaji ni kwenda kwenye cha michemi you may be working so hard unaweza kuwa unafanya kazi kwa bidii yes you are working so hard ndio unafanya kazi kwa bidii but what are the results lakini matokeo ni nini those who want greater results wale wanaotafuta matokeo makubwa they know how to manipulate things in the Wan, spirit wanajua jinsi ya kuchangamuza ama kuchangamua vitu it takes the presence of the spirits to determine the outcome of something inahitaji uwepo wa roho ili kuleta matokeo for a church to grow for a church to increase kanisa ili kuongezeka we must understand the secret lazima tuelewe siri of the outer ya madhabahu it is the outer that speaks ni madhabahu inayotamka makuu it is the outer that defends madhabahu ndio inayelinda many people in the secular world 
Watu wengi katika anga ya kidunia. Them, utacheza na wao. Then they tell you let me go and come. Unakueleza kwamba wacha niende nikarejee. Let me visit an altar and come back. Wacha nikatembelee madhabahu nikarejee. You see me in my true colors. Na utaniona katika anga ama roho uh, rangi zangu za kawaida. And you just take it lightly. Na utaichukulia tu katika mambo ya kawaida. You take it lightly. Kina utaichukua kwa kawaida. But wait. Because there is a law that has been programmed in the altar. Kwa sababu kuna sheria iliyotiwa kumiliki yale madhabahu. And it must work. Na lazima itende kazi. It is the integrity of God. Ni kwa uwezo wa Mungu. That causes every law to work. Inafanya sheria zote kufanya kazi. It is the integrity of God. Ni katika ile sheria ama uaminifu wa Mungu. That causes the law of gravity to work. Inafanya ile sheria ya kumilika anga kufanya kazi. That causes the day and night to be there. Na inafanya usiku na mchana kuwepo. That causes the seed season and the harvest season to be there. Inakuta inafanya mambo ya wakati ama nyakati za za sofa. The world is more real than we see. Anga ya 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 kiroho ina uwezo kama vile ambavyo zaidi tunavyoona people don't just raise in life watu hawainuki tu maisha business don't just grow biashara hainuki tu people don't just prosper watu hawainuliwi tu na mambo there is a law that is in operation kuna sheria ambayo inatenda kazi that's why bible says basi biblia inasema as long as there is day and night kama vile ambavyo kuna usiku na mchana as long as there is day and night kama vile kuna usiku na mchana seed season and harvest season will always be there wakati wa kuvuna na kutovuna utakuepo in other words the laws of the spirit will be programmed and work as they have been programmed kwa njia nyingine sheria iliyowekwa kudhibiti itakuepo na kufanya kazi kama ilivyokusudiwa that's why you find in some villages ndivyo mnapasa kana kwa vijiji vingine yeah life is just the same maisha ni yale yale nobody rises hakuna mtu anayenuka everybody is suffering the same kila mmoja anateseka kwa namna and ile ile and if you try to rise in that region na ukijaribu kuinuka katika eneo hilo you fall down utaanguka chini there are laws that have been set in motion kuna uh, kuna sheria ambayo inafanya kazi that's why you have to understand zima ndiposa ukaweze kuelewa in order to go to higher realms in the spirit ndio basi uka kuinuka katika levo nyingine everything about you must be tied in prayer kila kitu katikati yako ama kando yako kinafaa kitiwe katika maombi because it's in prayer where you visit the house ni kwa sababu ndani ya maombi unapoweza kuyafikia madhabahu it's in prayer where you manipulate the laws of god katika madhabahu hapo ndipo unaanza pindua ama kuchangamuza vitu is in prayer where you can access the art of god hapo katika maombi hapo ndipo unaweza kufikia neema ya Bwana. And any other thing that arouses about your life must be an altar. Na kila kitu ambacho inuka na maisha yako lazima kiwe madhabahu. So for you to rise. Kwa basi wewe kuinuka. You have to determine which altar must speak for you. Lazima uelewe ni roho gani ambayo inazungumza kwa madhabahu yako. You have to understand which law is operating in your life. Lazima uelewe ni sheria gani inayozungumza katika maisha yangu. There are people who are very much assured. Kuna watu wengi sana walio walio na dhibitisho. They cannot be defeated. Hawawezi kushindwa. Why because they are an assured of what works for them. Kwa sababu wanaelewa kila ambacho kinafanya kazi nyuma yao. And for sure it works for them. Na kwa kweli kinafanya kazi. Sometimes you wonder wakati mwingine unashangazwa why do we choose certain politicians kwa nini tunachagua wengine walio katika siasa and immediately they are sworn in we start saying we never knew na wakati ambapo wanafanywa ama kuapishwa tunaanza kulia of their campaigns we were streaming to them kwa sababu wakati wa, kwa nini wakati wa campaign ama ku ku, ku campaign tulikuwa tunaofuata we were very much there so much there to support them tulikuwa we tunafuata to die for them tulikuwa tunapigia kura tunapigia kilele na shango na kuwafuata but immediately they are sworn in na hivyo punde tu walipoingia ndani that zeal dies ile tamai kakufu you know what was in operation unajua ni nini kilichokuwa kile kifanya kazi there was a law that was set in motion ulikuwa na sheria iliyokuwa inafanya kazi you played the minds of people kuchangamza akili zako so that they can follow what you say ili kwamba mkafuate hiyo njia but you have to understand lakini unapaswa kuelewa you have a life to live una maisha ya kuishi in order for you to rise basi ili kwamba ukainuke 
you must concentrate on the outer that should speak on our behalf. Lazima ukatazame kwa umakinifu sana madhabahu inayozungumza kabla. There are some outers once you visit them. Kuna madhabahu mengine unapoyatembelea. That will be the end of you. Itakuwa ni mwisho wako. There are some outers once you connect with them. Kuna madhabahu mengine unapounganika nao. You will excel as if devil does not exist. Utaendelea ile kwamba kama shetani hayupo tena. As if you don't have any opposition. Ya kwamba ni kama hauta hauna jambo la kutishia. Why because it depends on the voice that is speaking. Kwa sababu inategemea sauti inayoonena katika ya madhabahu. It depends on the stature of that voice. Inategemea pia msingi wa yale yule sauti. It depends on the strength of that voice. Inazingemea pia nguvu katika yale madhabahu. And the source of that voice. Na chemichemi ya yale madhabahu. Hallelujah. The one that raises an altar controls everything. Ile neno ambalo limeuliwa katika madhabahu inaelekeza kila kitu. Anyone who raises an altar kila mmoja ambao uinua madhabahu will be assured of victory. Atakuwa na tumaini katika ushindi. Why because we bring sacrifices to the altar. Kwa sababu tunaleta sadaka katika madhabahu. But is the altar that now speaks to our life. Ivo basi na madhabahu yakapata nguvu ya kunena katika maisha. Look at the life of Abraham. Angalia maisha ya Abraham. After he was told come out of your people. Alipo to a land I will show you. Alipo ambiwa kwamba njoo toka kwa watu wako tukakuonyesha ama shamba ambalo utakapo ienda. From that moment tokea wakati huo. He started to walk with God. Akaanza kutembea Mungu. And every time God made a promise. Na kila wakati Mungu akampa hadizo. Aliinua madhabahu. Even if he was a nomad person who used to move from one place to another. Hata kama alikuwa mtu wa kutembea katika sehemu nyingine ama nyingine, alikuwa mtu wa kumwamini Mungu. Those outers kept on speaking on his behalf. Yale madhabahu alipokuwa kiainua ilianza kuzungumza katika anga yake. One time Jacob without knowledge. Ki, wakati mmoja Yakobo bila kujua. He slept on that altar. Akalalia yale madhabahu. He slept on that altar. Akalalia lile dhabahu. That's where he saw a vision of angels rising and coming. Wa basi akaona maono ya kwamba malaika wanashuka kutoka juu na kupanda tena. Whenever there are altars. Wakati wote kuna madhabahu. That are active ambayo iko kamili na kutenda iko hai an activity going on kuna kazi ambayo huendelea kufanyika pale there is an activity going on kazi huendelea kutendeka mahali pale those activities are carried by spirits na hiyo kazi inafanyika na ubebwa na roho remember there are godly outers and evil outers kuna kumbuka kwamba kuna madhabahu mazuri na mabaya there are godly outers kuna madhabahu mabaya the godly out godly outers madhabahu ya kiungu they are Powered by the cross and the blood of Jesus. It is Jesus who went to the Holy of Holies with his own blood. Because an altar will always demand a sacrifice. Jesus went to that altar and offered himself. Jesus Christ and that's why that altar is used to even after the day you go to america it will speak for you when you are there wherever you go it will speak but where you are there it will not speak wherever you go it will speak popote wendapo yatanena whenever the good news is preached because there is an outer of salvation mali popote habari njema itahubiriwa kuna madhabahu ya bwana yesu kristo that salvation will be seen wokovu utaonekana because there is an outer that speaks victory kwa sababu kuna madhabahu inayonena ushindi because outer that speaks of vengeance kuna madhabahu ambayo yanena kuhusu utakaso it will always be there why because that outer is life itakuepo na bado iko hai it life because jesus went there once and for all kwa sababu yesu kristo alikuepo na akaenda pale mwanzo hadi mwisho Altars they affect individuals. Madabao utibua ama utibua hisia za watu. They affect families. Yanatibua hata hisia za jamii. They affect even the cities. Yanatibua hata namna ya uh, inchi ama miji. So we have to design the environment that we are in. Kwa hivyo tunapaswa kupambanua eneo ambalo tupo so that we can know and determine what should happen in our lives hivyo basi tukaweza kujua nini jambo gani linapaswa kufanyika katika maisha yetu when we talk of intercession wakati tunapoingia katika maombezi when you talk of intercession you don't just pray 
utapoingia katika maombi ama mabu, ma, you pray with understanding unaomba katika kuelewa because you know what you are dealing with sababu unaelewa kile ambacho unakabiliana nacho remember what god wanted to finish that sodom and gomorrah kumbuka wakati bwana alipoanza ama ataka kuangamiza sodom na gomorrah abraham asked him bwana abraham akamuuliza are you going to finish both the righteous and the evil. Je, Bwana utaomaliza wema na hata wale wabaya pamoja. Why because he knew there is an outer that speaks for the righteous. Kwa sababu alijua kwamba kuna madhabahu inaonena kwa sababu ya wale wateule wazuri. And he knew the covenant he had with God. Na anajua kaelewa kwamba kuna agano ambalo tulikuwa tunao Bwana. And that covenant was to defend him and his people. Na agano lile lilikuwa kwamba likaweze kuwashindania watu wake wote. So it takes spiritual intelligence to determine possibilities. Inahitaji ufahamu wa kiroho ili kwamba kujua mambo ya madhabahu. Why do we have a seat with so many churches? Why should we have a seat with so many churches? Kwa nini tuwe na mji ambao uko na makanisa mengi zaidi? Yet there is nothing significant happening in the lives of people. Na ile hali hakuna kitu maksusi kinaofanyika katikati ya maisha ya watu wa Mungu. Yet the same evil is being carried on day after day. Maovu yanaendelea usiku na mchana na kila siku. Why do we have a nation? Kwa nini tuko na inch? Ampa, that is 80% Christianity. Ambao ni asilimia themanini wa Kristo. But the rampant corruption. Lakini sehemu ya ufisadi imesikita mizizi. In the land na wovu umekita mizizi yet we have even bishops who are visiting the state house na ilikuwa mba tuna wachungaji maaskofu wanaotembelea ikulu why don't we discern what is happening in our nation and deal with it tusipambanue ni kitu gani kinaendelea katika nchi yetu why don't we discern what kwa, should be done kwa nini tusipambao kila ambacho kinapaswa tukifanye Oh my god. I need to give a few definitions of an altar. Nahitaji kupeana mifano kadha kwa ajili ya madhabahu. An altar is a gateway to spiritual world. Madhabahu ni lango ama malango katika anga ama ulimwengu wa kiroho. You want to connect to spiritual world. Unahitaji kuunganika katika anga ya kiroho. You will need an altar. Unahitaji madhabahu. Because it is an altar that authorizes the spirit to work. Kwa sababu madhabahu ndio upeana mamlaka ya kuzungumza katika anga ya kiroho. It is the altar that authorizes the angels to work. Ni madhabahu tu ndiye anayepeana amri kwa malaika kutenda kazi. It is only man who can operate in two worlds. Mwanadamu tu and the Mwanadamu tu anayeweza kutenda kazi kwa namna mbili katika anga ya kiroho na namna ya kiasili. Spirits can work on their own. Maroho haziwezi tena kazi kwa uh, kwa kwa kiubinafsi. Why that's why they need a body or an altar to work on. Hivyo basi zinahitaji mwili ama madhabahu kutenda kazi. Mm. For them to operate they need an altar to authorize them. Maroho kutenda kazi anahitaji madhabahu kupeana mamlaka. For spirit of God to work in this region, he needs an altar as a platform. Roho Mungu atende kazi katika eneo hili anahitaji madhabahu kutenda kazi. For God to work in this region, he needs a platform for him to work. Roho Mungu utenda kazi anahitaji jukua la kutenda kazi. We have the responsibility of raising the altar Tuna for majukumu ya kuinua madhabahu katika eneo hili. We have a responsibility of preparing the altar for Tuna majukumu ya kutahirisha na kuandaa madhabahu katika eneo hili. Ili one mlolongo to turn upside down. Ili kwamba watu mlolongo wakaweza kusaidika. This altar must have a higher voice. Hii madhabahu lazima ikuwe na sauti ya kuu zaidi. This altar must have a higher voice in this region. Hii madhabahu lazima ikaweza kuwa na sauti katika eneo hili kwa sababu madhabahu ndio unena kwa ajili ya watu yes we are sending representatives to the state house tunatum, kama tunatuma watangulizi katika ile ikulu to go and speak on our behalf wili kwamba wakazungumza kwa ajili yetu but that one is physical lakini hiyo ni ya kiasili it is limited ina mwisho wake it has its time plan ina wakati wake wa kudidimia places they cannot reach lakini kuna mahali hawezi fika that's why we have so much rampant cattle wrestling 
in those areas. Hiyo ndio sababu tuna misingi mimi za upotovu katika maeneo hayo. We have a government in place. Na lakini kuna na, na hivyo basi tuko na serikali mamlakani. But the spiritual has no limitation. Lakini kiroho wana misingi ya kudhibitika. When an outer speaks it has no limitation. Kama the bow inapozungumza haina udhibiti. That's why it can speak in village and it affects you in the city. Inaweza kuzungumza katika kijiji chenu na kukukuza katika. It can speak in Nairobi affect you in Kisumu. Inaweza kuzungumza Nairobi na kukuzia katika Kisumu. It can speak in Kenya and affect somebody in Rwanda. Inaweza kuzungumza Kenya na kumfikia mtu Rwanda. Why because the spiritual law has no limit. Kwa sababu anga ya kiroho haina udhibiti. It has no time and place. Haina wakati na nyakati. That's why we need to activate the laws of God. Hivyo basi tunaweza kutibua ama kutegua madhabahu ya Bwana. That's why God asked Job. Hivyo basi Bwana akamuuliza Job. Do you know the spiritual laws? Je, ulielewa? Can you use them to use the possibilities? Na wewe unaweza kuitumia kutibua mambo ya nyakati hizi? Have you ever commanded your morning? Umeweza kuamurisha asubuhi yako? That's why he asked him in the verse number 12. Hivyo basi akamuuliza katika mstari wa 12. Have you ever commanded your morning? Je, umewazi kuamurisha asubuhi yako? Do you know the store house of the light? Unajua ile 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 Do you know where the wind is locked? Unajua lile gala la la la, la nini na upepo mahali unapoenda? Do you know where the snow is locked? Unajua mahali kuna ile eh, Theluji hutoka. In other words he was telling them there are laws that operate. Kwa mambo mimi nilikuwa namwambia kwamba kuna mambo ambayo yanadhibiti eneo hili. And that's why today we need to concentrate on this out so that he can speak on our behalf. Hivyo basi tunahitaji kusababisha madhabahu haya yanene kwa ajili yetu. The way Jesus went to the outer holy of all is once and for all. Na kama vile ambavyo Yesu Kristo alienda kwa madhabahu moja ana hata mwisho. And that's why I've told you that are activities happening in the outer. Hivyo basi tunasema kwamba matendo ama matukio tunataka Kama kweli uko timamu ama sio timamu. Mm. If in the physical realm. Kama hivi kwa asili in those old shrines. You could not just pass there and do anything you wanted. Katika tu namna ya kawaida hauwezi kuyapitia madhabahu na kufanya chochote kile. Why because that is a gate to spirituality kwa sababu hiyo ni malango katika anga ya kiroho chochote kinaweza fanyika kwako pale and that's why in those prophets when they were going to the holy of holies you used to tie them hivyo basi wakati na nyakati zile walipokuwa kienda katika madhabahu waliweza kufungwa kamba ili kwamba wakaweze kujulikana so that you can know they are still there hivyo basi ujue kwamba walipo pale bado wako hai because they knew anything can happen in that place sababu walikuwa wanajua mahali pale chochote kinaweza tokea so we have to know what to do to the altar hivyo basi tunapaswa kuelewa kile ambacho tunahitaji kukifanya kwa madhabahu that's why spirit you need an altar Niposa maroho yanahitaji madhabahu kufanya kazi. Alta is a system of authorization. Madhabahu ni msingi ama ni anga ya kupeana mamlaka. Just give us second Samuel chapter 6. Tupatie Samueli wa pili sita. Samueli wa pili sita. Verse number 11. Tarwa 11. Samueli wa pili sita 11. Maandiko yanasema kwamba sanduku la Bwana akalitia katika nyumba ya ya Obedi Edom mgiti muda wa miezi mitatu naye bwana akambariki Obedi Edom na nyumba yake yote that's why i'm telling an altar is a system that authorizes things to happen to you hivyo basi niposa tunasema kwamba madhabahu yakitendeka mahali hivyo basi ufanyika malango ya kuamrisha vitu kufanyika kwako that's why you see some people good things will still be happen even if you oppose them Good things will still be happen to them. Why? Because there is an outer that is powering that. Hivyo basi ndivyo utakapoelewa watu wazuri hata kama utataka kuwatendea kinyume, mambo mazuri yataendelea kufanyika kwa juu ya kazi nzuri ya madhabahu. Grace is authorized to operate. 
Wao utumika kupeana mamlaka ya kutumika. That's why you can see some people they can change jobs within two days. Sasa unaweza ona watu wengine wanaweza chukua kazi kwa siku mbili. While some people have been tamaking for 10 years. Na wengine wanaweza tembea kwa miaka 10. Somebody comes from a CEO from somewhere goes to another company immediately. Na mwingine anatoka kwenye hii kampuni na kurukia nyingine kwa moja kwa moja. While another company is eyeing for the same person. Na kampuni nyingine naye namtafuta yule mtu. Why because there is a law that is authorizing kwa sababu, good things to happen. Kwa sababu kuna sheria inayofanya kazi na kuamurisha vitu vizuri kutendeka. Hmm. What happened to Isaac? Nini kilichotendekea Isaac? What Isaac? happened to Jacob? Nini kilichomtendekea Yakobo? What happened to Israel? There was a law that was operating on the altar that Abraham raised. Kuna kitu ambacho kinafanyika ni kwamba kuna sheria ambayo Abrahamu alikuwa ameinua katika madhabahu na inafanya kazi. And they kept on speaking. They kept on speaking. Na hiyo sauti iliendelea kunena. An altar is a place of covenant. That's where you make a covenant. And that is where the covenants are maintained. The covenant of salvation is there. And it will still remain. Why? Because there is an altar in heaven powering that. Madhabao mbinguni ambayo inatia nguvu madhabao yao. There is an altar that is authorizing that. Kuna madhabao inayotia nguvu ama huamurisha pale pale. There is an altar that is maintaining that. Kuna madhabao ambayo inaendelea kuyashikilia. Mm. An altar is a place of sacrifice. Madhabao ni mahali ambapo tunatoa adhabu. You don't sacrifice anywhere. Hawezi toa adhabu mahali popote. You don't sacrifice anyhow. Hawezi toa tu kwa namna yote You ile. must have an altar to receive your sacrifice. Lazima uwe na madhabu ya kupokea agane, because sadaka once yako. Because it is received your sacrifice. Mali pale upokea sadaka yako. It will now start speaking for you. Ndio sasa ianze kuzungumza kwa achili yako. If you bring the sacrifice on the altar, ukileta sadaka kwenye madhabahu, it is now the altar that will speak from heaven to you. Ni madhabahu itakayo nena kutoka mbinguni kwenda kwako. It's only altar that speaks in one way. Ni madhabahu tu inayo nena kwa njia moja. It takes from the spirit to you. Inachukua kutoka kwenye roho kuelekea kwako. It takes from the spiritual realms to you. Inachukua kutoka anga ya kiroho kuja kwako. An altar is a place of exchange. Dabao, ni mahali ambapo tunafanya mawasiliano. Is a place of exchange. Ni mahali pa kuwasiliano. Look at what happened to Anna. Kile kile chile jo mfanyi kia Anna. Baren. Alipo inama pale kwenye madabao. She came to the outer baren. Aliku alikuja kwenye madabao kama yeye ame yeye ni tasa. But that night, kina usiku ule. From the word that was spoken from the altar. Utokana neno ambalo neno kwenye madhabahu. That night. Usiku ule. That's why Bible says. Pastor Babila nasema ya kwamba. Many are the plans of a heart. But a word. Wingi ni mifangilio katika miyoze. But a word of victory. Lakini uneno la ushindi. You know where it should come from. Unachua mali na paso kutoka. Just a word. Neno tu a word neno tu from the outer kutoka kwa madhaba it can change the rest of your life inaweza badilisha maisha yako yote it can change the rest of your life inaweza badilisha maisha yako yote one signature from the outer sahihi moja tu kutoka kwa madhaba one signature from the outer sahihi moja tu kutoka kwa madhaba uni and the rest is history na mengine yote ni historia an outer is a place of refuge ma Madhabao ni maali pa kimbilio. During the times of children of Israel. Tangia wakati wa wana wa Israeli. They used to set places, set certain places apart. Walikuwa natenga masehemu. As places of refuge. Maali pa kimbilio. As places of refuge. Maali pa kujificha. And remember Bible says now in the last days I will write my law. Na hivyo basi nasema kwamba wakati wa mwisho nitaandika sheria yangu katika mioyo za wana wangu. So they will know where to run for refuge. basi watajua mahali pa kukimbilia kwa msaada. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
Jina la Bwana ni msingi imara. Bible says the righteous they run to it Wata, and they are saved. Watakatifu ukimbilia na wao wako dhabiti. So when, wako you, salama. when you run to the altar. Unapokimbilia madhabahuni. Just because you are fearing. Hivyo basi kwa sababu tu umeogofia. Just because they are coming after you. Hivyo basi kwa sababu wanakukimbiza. It will thunder for them itafanyikia kaza bitakulinda wewe one time samuel was was sacrificing to god siku moja samuel akawa anatoa adhabu kwa bwana and he heard that the philistines are just coming to fight the israel na akapata habari ya kwamba wa filisti waja kupigana na israeli immediately took a stone and raked it and put an oil on it and invoked the name of god akakimbia moja kwa moja na kuinua madhabahu na kuweka sadaka bible says god thundered Bwana akapiga radi and from that time until Samuel died the Philistines never came to fight the Israelites Ivo basi kwa sauti ku Bwana akapiga uh, radi na ivo basi wana wale wa Israeli wakaona nguvu za Bwana kuwapiga wa Israeli wa, wa, wa Philisti What kept the Philistines away was the outer was what that was speaking Kile kiliwafanya wa Philisti kukaa mbali ni kwamba madhabahu yaliinuliwa That's why I'm telling you an outer authorizes the spiritual world to speak on your behalf Basi nakwambia kwamba madhabahu hufanya ama upeana amri kwa anga za roho kuzungumza juu yako It's like it's giving a signature on your life Inapeana sahihi katika maisha yako It's like it's giving you a green light Ni kama kupeana amri ama uwezo wa kwenda So an altar is a place to go and hide. Madhabahu hivyo basi ni mahali pa kujificha. When you feel everything is weighing you down, run to the altar. Ukifikia kwamba kuna vitu vinavyokusukuma chini kimbilia madhabahu. That's why Jesus says come unto me. You who are every London. Ni posa Yesu Kristo anakuja njoni kwangu nyinyi wote mliozidiwa na mizigo. And I will give you rest. Nitawapa mapumziko. I will give you rest. Nitawapa mapumziko. Where do you run to God at the altar? Napokimbilia Bwana katika madhabahu. An altar is a place of worship and a place of prayer. Madhabahu ni mahali pa kuabudu na maombi. Prayers that are made on the altar. Maombi ambayo hufanyika madhabahuni. Are not like prayers you make in your own house. Sio kama maombi unayofanya kule kwako sebuleni ama kule. Are not like prayers you make in Aboretum. Sio kama maombi ambayo unayofanya kule kwenye msitu Aboreta. Why because an altar has its real purpose to speak to your life. Hivyo basi ni kwa sababu madhabahu yana uh, uh, yana uwezo wa kuzungumza juu ya maisha yako. It authorizes God to speak. Hiyo madhabahu ndio inayemfanyisha Mungu kuweza kuzungumza juu yako. Remember God will always partner with man to accomplish things. Kumbuka kwamba Bwana upenda kuambatana na mwanadamu ili kutimiza mambo. And you can only partner with God through his channels. Na unaweza tu kuambatana na Bwana kulingana na njia zake. An altar is a place for power. Madhabao ni mahali pa nguvu. Is a place to get the anointing. Mahali ambapo tunapokea upako. Is a place to be recharged. Mahali ambapo pa kutiwa nguvu tena. An altar act like a battery in this microphone. Madhabahu hufanyika kama battery ama ikichombo ndani ya kipaza tauti. If I take the battery out of this microphone it will not speak. Nikiondoa sehemu ya miale katika uh, chombo hiki kipaza sauti haitafanya kazi. So that what that is the work of the altar to power your life. Hiyo ndio kazi ya madhabahu kupeana nguvu katika maisha yako. That's the work of the outer. Hiyo ndio kazi ya madhabahu. You don't need to know a lot of languages. Hauhitaji kujua uh, lugha nyingi. But you only need to know the secret. Unahitaji kujua tu siri. Our fathers in old never knew many things. Wazazi wetu hawakujua mambo mengi sana. But they knew what the outer can do. Lakini walielewa kile ambacho madhabahu hufanya. An altar is a dwelling place for deities. An altar is a dwelling place In other words for gods. Madhabahu ni mahali ambapo panatumikia kazi ya miungu. That's where gods dwell. Hapo ndio miungu inatumikia. That's where spirits dwell. Hapo ndio maroho yanafanya kazi. If you read Psalms 91. Isoma Zaburi 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high. 
anayedumu katika sehemu za siri za buona shall abide in the shadow atakuwa uweponi ama chini ya kivuli chake an altar is a secret place adabao ni mahali pasipo it may look open Nazaonekana wazi. It may be open for everybody. Naweza kuwa wazi kwa kila mmoja. But it is a secret place. Lakini ni mahali pasiri. This is a secret place. Ni mahali pasiri. An altar is a place of judgment. Adabao ni mahali pa hukumu. An altar is a place to set the scores. Adabao ni mahali pa kuamrisha mapigano. An altar is a place of judgment and vindication. Badabao ni mahali pa mapigano ama makabiliano kulipishiwa. Give us 2nd Kings chapter 19 verse 14. Mfalme wa pili 19. Wazia 14. Mfalme wa pili 19. Second Kings 19:14 Of Paul wa pili 19 14 Maandiko yanasema kwamba basi Ezekaya akaupokea waraka katika mikono ya wale wajumbe akausoma kisha Ezekaya akapanda akaingia katika nyumba ya Bwana akaukunjua mbele za Bwana Na Ezekiah akaomba mbele za Bwana akasema, "E Bwana Mungu wa Israeli, ukae juu ya marikebu ma- makerubi wewe nam wewe pekee yako, ndiye ndiwe Mungu mfalme zote za dunia." Mungu wa, wa falme zote za dunia, wewe ndiye uliyeziumba mbingu na inchi. 16 Tega sikio lako, "E Bwana, usikie fumbuo macho yako." E Bwana uone uyasikie maneno ya Senakeribu tena ambayo amemtuma mtu aje naye ili kumtukana Mungu aliye hai 17 Ni kweli Bwana falme wa Ashuru amewaharibu mataifa na inchi zao 18 na kuitupa miungu yao motoni kwa maana haikuwa miungu bali ni kazi ya mikono ya wanadamu ilikuwa miti na mawe tu ndiye sababu wakayaribu this is a servant of god hii ni sauti ya bwana the israelites were being terrified wale wa israeli walikuwa nashtumiwa sana and this king has to ask them which god can rescue you from my hands na hii inaonyesha basi kwamba wazi ni Mungu gani anaweza kukuokoa mkono wako. He was asking them which god. Alikuwa anauliza ni Mungu gani? You know what I've done to other kings. Umeona kile ambacho nimefanya kwa wale wafalme wengine? I have destroyed their gods. Nimeharibu nime miungu zao. But the servant of God ran to the altar. Lakini mtumishi wa Mungu akaenda katika madhabahu. And he spread it before God. Na kamwagilia mbele ya Bwana. And he prayed God read nakaomba bwana look at this angalia it, haya it is true he has done whatever he has said here to other god ni kweli kabisa amefanya vile ame, ameandika vile amefanya kwa zile miungu zingine but one thing i know these gods are works of men lakini kila ambacho najua hii ni kazi ya mikono ya wanadamu only you and you alone is able ni wewe tu na ni wewe pekee unayeweza so an altar is a place to run for God to vindicate you. Maali, madhabahu ni mahali ambapo tunakimbilia ili kwamba Bwana akatuokoe. Yes, there are people who are terrifying you. Don't kuna, argue with them. Kuna watu in the altar. Kuna watu wanaokushtumu ama kukutingiza imani yao. Usikimbilie wao, kimbilie kwa Bwana. Yes, you have scandals all over. Don't argue with anybody. Run to the altar. Yes, ndio kwamba unaweza kuwa na makashifa uh, ma, ma mbalimbali lakini na kuazimu na kuazimu kwamba kimbia kwa Bwana. Run to the outer. Kimbilia kwa madhabahu ya Bwana. God knows. Bwana anajua. Irrespective of who he is. Irrespective of whoever is accusing you. 
ijapokuwa tu hata watu wataweza kukushtumu haijalishi yule atakayezungumza kinyume na wewe kila kitu kimoja anapokielewa kwamba ufalme wa Bwana ni ufalme wa haki ni ufalme wa haki and if you are righteous before him na ukiwa mwenye haki mbele za Bwana he will vindicate for you ataweza kukuokoa he will vindicate for you atakuokoa you will just be there utakuepo tu people will assume you don't know anything watu watafikia kwamba ujui chochote people will assume you have a secret watu watafikia kwamba wewe uelewi kitu but you know where to go lakini unaelewa pali pa wa kupasa kwenda you know where to go unajua mahali pa kuelekea one time in my place of work I'll have somebody said somebody is no anything you you and together with the other person the three of you very soon you will lose your job and i told them i don't it doesn't matter i know where to go wakati mmoja alishtumiwa sana kazini pale pamoja na wenzake lakini akasema kwamba mimi naelewa pale ambapo napaswa kwenda i know where to go ninajua mahali napaswa kwenda and somebody asked me did you see the email na mtu akamuuliza je uliona ujumbe i told them i'm not aware because i did not see it amwambia kwamba sielewi kwa sababu sikuona i told you I don't fight these battles. Naambia kwamba niliwaeleza mimi sipigane vita hivi. As long as I know I am righteous. Ndio basi kama ninavyoelewa kwamba mimi niko upande wa haki. I know where to go. Ninajua mahali ambapo napaswa kwenda. And I went in the altar. Naenda nikaenda kwenye madhabahu. I poured my heart. Nikamwagilia moyo wangu. I say like what this servant said, God you add what they say. Nikatamka kama vile yule mtumishi alivyosema, Bwana ulijua kile walivyosema. And that email they are to- talking about I've not seen it, you know. Na ule ujumbe walioandika kwenye mtandao. A week after. It was Juma the... lilipopita. Somebody he asked me, have you not seen it? because I have received mine? Gina kaja akamwambia wewe ujapokea barua pepe na mimi nishapokea. I don't know where your name went. Kasema kwamba sielewi jina lako lilienda wapi. I told him I told you I know where to go. Nikamweleza kwamba mimi najua mahali pa kuenda. And because it was a which ending. Najua kwamba ilikuwa ni wakati ambao ni wa uchawi ama nguvu za uchawi tulikuwa tunafanya kazi. Finally, hatimaye God vindicated. Mungu akaniokoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As I finish, apomalizia. Satanic altars are powered by sin and iniquity. Adhabu ya kishetani inafanya kazi kupitia katika dhambi na uovu. Sin and iniquity. Dhambi na uovu. As long as there is sin and iniquity on that altar kama vile inapokuwa dhambi na uovu katika yale madhabahu those outers work negatively to Mada, people madhabahu hayo yataendelea kufanya kazi kinyume na watu and that's why as sin is increasing iniquity is increasing in our nation kwa basi tunapoona kwamba dhambi na uovu unainuka sana katika taifa letu let's know that we are at danger basi tukaelewa kwamba tuko katika nyakati za hatari. Because these altars will work against our people. Kwa sababu madhabahu haya yatafanya kinyume. Yatafanya kazi kinyume na taifa letu na watu wetu. When you see people are not rebuking sin. Ukiona watu hawakemei dhambi. When you see people rejoicing in evil. Ukitaona watu wanafurahikia katika dhambi na uovu. Know that that is the beginning of a downfall. Unajua kwamba huo ndio mwanzo wa kuanguka. Because Bible says. Biblia inasema kwamba by righteousness when the people are ruled by the righteous kama kweli hivyo basi watu watakelekezwa katika haki they will rejoice wataweza kushangilia but wickedness is a reproach unto any nation kwa hivyo basi uovu ni tukio la uchungu katika taifa lolote when you see wickedness everywhere unapoona uovu kila mahali you just need to know where you should go unahitaji tu kujua mahali pa kwenda you need to empower the outer of Una, god unahitaji kutia nguvu madhabahu ya bwana glory to god and these things are personal
territorial and in the bloodline hivyo basi haya mambo ni katika namna ya kibinafsi katika maeneo na katika hali ya kizazi chenu because just give us osea number chapter 7 verse 1 Tupatie tu Hosea 7 moja kwa haraka media Hosea 7 verse 1 Hosea 7 mstari wa kwanza Hosea 7 mstari wa kwanza maandiko yanasema kwamba wakati nitakapo kumponya wakati nitakapo kumponya Israeli ndipo Ya funuli wapo maovu ya Ifraim Na ubaya wa Samaria maana Wanatenda uongo Na, mwi, na mwizi huvunja nyumba za watu Na kundi la magaidi ushambulia inche Just look at this Which means when an evil is being done in the land It means that that territory It will suffer the consequences Kailewe kwamba uovu unapotendeka katika sehemu Hiyo eneo lote litapitia machukizo ama uchungu wa dhambi hizo. If I steal money and buy you food with that money, you are participated in that. Okay, nikichukua pesa nikaiba na nikakununulia chakulia ukafurahia, hivyo basi nimehusika pale. That evil you are participated that. Uovu huo nimehusika. You are counted as if you are participated. Inakuwa upande moja na ule uovu. Some evil are in the bloodline. Uovu mwingine huko katika uh, uh, you don't know what your, your grand grandfather did. Uh, but that thing has been, has been in the blood is counted as if that bloodline has done it. Na hivyo basi kila ambacho kilifanyika katika kizazi chenu kinahesabika kwako. As I finish calling out as I say they are powered by the throne of grace and the blood of Jesus. Kwa basi tunasema kwamba madhabahu ya kiungu yanatiwa nguvu na neema ya Bwana. The blood of Jesus. Na damu ya Yesu Kristo. And the throne of grace. Na kiti cha neema. That's why Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord seated and his veil covered the church. Hivyo basi Isaiah akasema kwamba wakati ambapo mfano Uzia alipokufa niliona mkono wa Bwana neema yake na wingu lake likafunika niswa. So that throne of grace. Hivyo basi kiti cha neema and the blood of Jesus. Na damu ya Yesu Kristo. Are the ones that power the altars of God. Hivyo ndivyo vinavyotia nguvu madhabahu ya kiungu. As we stand. Maposimama. I just want you to focus on your life. Just ask yourself which altar has been speaking on my behalf. What have I been struggling with? What have I been struggling with all this time long? Why do I seem like I'm a timing? Why am I not progressing? You need to ask yourself a question. Are there some laws that are operating? Are there some laws operating in my family line? In my place of work, are there some laws operating? In my area of residence, are there some laws operating? You need to ask God, open my eyes. Open the eyes of my understanding. I need to know. I need to understand. The Bible says the secrets of God are with his servants. It is, this, it, it is God who reveals his secrets to his people. So that they can on those secrets. Just ask God to open your hands. Just tell God to open your hands. Yes, Lord, I want to see. Yes, Lord, I want to understand. Yes, Lord, I want to know what will happen to me. What will happen to my children. What will happen to my future. What will happen to my future. What will happen to my future. What you have in store for me.
katika jina la Yesu. Fungua tu kinywa chako tunapomaliza. Mwambie Bwana, mali hapa mfame nimesimama katika madhabahu yako matakatifu ili kwamba neno lako 